in my language, translate to a place of many fish. Char is an important part of our nourishment, but with climate change, the migration's been changing and getting harder to predict. When I was a child, the fish were big and ran strong, and with the right care, they can remain this way for generations to come. Honestly, I wanted to work with environmental DNA, eDNA, very much because I thought it was a very cool tool. So I approached Jean-Sébastien and asked if he would have interest in it. He wanted to work with uh, eDNA, with the architecture. To me, that was a perfect situation to try and test out how good eDNA was at, uh, at monitoring the timing of the migration. With eDNA, we are capable to say at that date or at that location, there is more DNA than a month before. My name is Elie Zimbo, and I'm co-owner of uh, Viventem, and uh, we have a science support agency. With the eDNA project, we were invited to participate in the elaboration of the project. We helped them on the field when they visited in spring for the early sampling. And when they left to Quebec, then we sampled and uh, took care of the lab work for two whole months to make sure the sampling was uh, continuous through the season. And then we helped them again when they came back uh, in August for the end of the season. So we uh, labeled the filter and we're going to filter into it. And we're going to send this back to Université Laval and they're going to uh, do analysis to look at the eDNA. We had so many beautiful days this summer with that project because I love canoeing and those sites are really, really beautiful, especially the Inuhoktuk Lake, it's really far. And then you have Mount Pelly in the back and the river you have to cross. And when you walk on the ice, it's, it's just magical. Such a big adventure, it was really, really nice. GPS doesn't work through water. The, the waves that are used to talk to uh, the satellites don't travel through water. What travels really well in aquatic environment are sound waves. They have acoustic sensors. They see where they go, when they are going downstream and upstream. So they, they pass by these receivers and the date and time is recorded. It takes a lot of effort to get the fish to surgically implant them with tags. Tags are expensive, each tag costs a lot of money. So there's a limited number of fish that we can tag with our, our uh, telemetry equipment. And so in, in aquatic environments, we need to use different approaches. We used a half oxygen diving bottle that has been cut, so it's pretty heavy. And we put the bottle in it and we send down the whole system at two meters deep. Then we bring it back and just close the bottle and that's how we get the samples. In the field, we also take environmental data. We know that DNA is affected by multiple factors like uh, the current, but also like pH, temperature, etc. So for that, we're using the RBR with multiple sensors that we send down to the water after sampling. All those information uh, in the entire water column that we'll be able to uh, use after. It's a long day. <laughs> eDNA will give us another tool to try to better understand how changes in the dates of ice off and, and freezing will have an influence on fish migration. That changes when the fishermen uh, can go and, and get their commercial quotas. And so this just adds a tool to our toolbox of, of ways to uh, see how climate change will have an impact on uh, fish populations. Our preliminary results with the environmental DNA are really promising. I was surprised how cool the result would be. <laughs> the data is so amazing that they decided to extend until the end of September. It's actually almost too perfect to be true. <laughs> so.
So we really see uh, the concentration moving in the direction of the bay. Um, so it's, it's really cool to see on the map uh, that pattern moving. It's, it's just super visible and super cool. So that's super promising. I think it's good information. Being sustainable is important for us, so I think tracking them is definitely something that we do like to uh, maintain. Seeing the dates and times change, I think uh, it would be devastating if the char were to disappear. Um, our community is known for fish, and if the fish are gone, I'm not sure what kind of way we would uh, fill that gap. Every drop of water, there's a story. Through environmental DNA, we're not just tracing fish, we're tracing the future of Arctic ecosystems. As the Arctic warms and water ships, the char continue their ancient migration. And thanks to this research, their journey becomes a little more visible. <laughs>